Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So in our previous video we started discussion on Kafka schema registry. I have discussed why we need schema registry, basically what problem this schema registry solves, right? And we have seen the demonstration in practical manner using conductor tool also, right? Now just a quick recap. So suppose we are having a data like this way and uh, corresponding to this data, this schema we already registered in our schema registry which is running here. If I go to overview section for our conductor, here this schema registry is running. And if I go to schema registry here, we have registered this schema. H, the key should be integer and the key name should be string type. If you go to structure, here also you can see the name of the keys and the required data types, okay. If I go to version, here we observed that this schema ID corresponding to our this particular schema is 10 and the version is one because this is the first time we registered this particular schema. So earlier no version is available. So as this is the first one, so version is one as simple as that. Okay, right. Now let's just publish some data in this particular topic what we already created. So here I open producer and here I will start my consumer. Okay, so here is producer and here is consumer. Okay, and now here I will choose my topic. In the value part here first I will choose Avro schema registry and here we registered with record name and that is basically this particular record okay and I will paste this particular one here and in the consumer section here we need to choose Avro based on schema ID the schema ID is 10 based on that deserialization should happen in the consumer side and here confluent encoding we are checking because actually we are sending encoded data so here decoding should happen okay and here start from now or latest message only will be consumed and here what I can do I can choose the topic also so here it is done and let's start okay so here our consumer started polling so if we are publishing this kind of data from producer and as this is following this schema properly so if you are producing the message in the topic here you can see the message is coming properly okay suppose for example we are sending some bad data like for example age should be integer but suppose we are passing 56.2 okay a decimal value and here we are producing to the topic here it is taking the value 56 basically here decimal data it is converting to integer okay suppose we are sending some string data for example demo testing okay and here if we are producing here we are seeing that it is throwing an error the age should be integer type so let's put this an integer value okay 78 and suppose in a bad data the key name is not available okay only the age is available if you are producing this then also it is throwing an error and producer is not publishing this kind of bad data in our Kafka cluster right here we are clearly getting error that failed to convert JSON to Avro the field name type string position 1 is not set and has no default value okay right so we can clearly understand due to application of schema registry the producer cannot send any bad data in our Kafka cluster as a result our Kafka cluster will be clean and our consumer or the downstream jobs will not fail okay this we understood in our previous discussion now I will stop the consumer okay right and now let's focus on this particular architecture so I told you that Suppose we are starting a producer and we are using a particular schema for the first time then what will happen the Avro serializer will use that particular schema for serialization purpose of the data whatever is coming in real time from the source system it will do a compatibility check that is whether the data is following the structure of the schema file or not and if the structure is maintained then the Avro serializer will serialize the data and it will not stop here because we are using this particular schema file for the first time so Avro serializer will register this schema in this schema registry right and then it will get the schema id which it will append with the serialized data and send the id along with data to the kafka cluster and using that particular id in the consumer section the Avro deserializer will get the actual schema from the schema registry basically i told you right that in schema registry there is a schema id versus schema mapping is available so when consumer get id along with serialized data to deserialize this from id it will get back the actual schema and avro deserializer will deserialize the data 
following this schema okay if they are compatible then deserialization will happen properly otherwise it will throw an error and then any consumer processing can be done or else it will directly push to the target site that can be a database or elastic search cluster etc etc okay now think a situation like this way your source is continuously producing a data and you started your producer and now for the first message whenever came in the producer then as this schema is used for the first time then it was registered okay but for the second message third message and so on whenever messages are coming in a very rapid speed every time we no need to register the schema in schema registry right but here we need the id to send with the data so what happens in producer as well as consumer side to make the process faster here there is local cache okay in local cache basically the mapping with schema id versus schema is stored so what will happen whenever message will come first the producer will check in local cache whether for that particular schema the corresponding schema id is available or not if it is available then we call that as cache hit right so from there itself it will get the id and it will send that to kafka broker and if in local cache for that particular schema the id is not available might be that schema we are using for the first time or something like that then we will consider that as cache miss and then only the avro serializer will go to register that okay so once it is registered for the next time onwards most of the time the id versus schema mapping is available in local cache itself so producer no need to again and again go to schema registry to get the schema id it will get from the local cache itself similarly in the consumer side to make the process faster the avro deserializer no need to go again and again to the schema registry with the id to get the actual schema here also local cache is available where schema id versus schema mapping is there so as soon as the avro deserializer or the consumer will receive the id along with data it will search in local cache that for this particular schema id what is this schema okay and if it is getting the schema from the local cache itself then in the consumer side we will call that as cache hit okay and if it is not getting in local cache then only it will go to schema registry to get the actual schema corresponding to the schema id okay so because of the presence of the local cache the process is faster no need to again and again go to schema registry to get the schema id in the producer side and as well as in the consumer side no need to go again and again to the schema registry to get the actual schema corresponding to the schema id right so i hope you understood the importance of local cache in pipeline with schema registry and you no need to worry about these things much because whether you are using java or python based api or cli in the back end it is handled automatically okay so just as a concept you can remember this that there is a local cache available to avoid again and again reaching out to schema registry and that way network bandwidth also get reduced okay or efficiently we can utilize the network bandwidth for other purpose right so i hope you understood this now let's go to the next topic that is schema evaluation okay so we successfully registered a schema that is like this way age and name it is fine now suppose the business requirement changes and we need to add another field that can be suppose subject okay and that we need to update in the schema registry so one existing schema whether you are adding some field or deleting some field etc etc then we call that as schema evaluation right so i hope you have studied this while exploring pyspark with json etc because often while handling json data we need to handle schema evaluation also so that same concept is applicable here okay and how schema registry handle that let us try to understand okay so with time our avro schema will evolve as i told you that business requirement might get changed with time they need some extra uh, fields or might be some existing fields they want to remove anything is possible right so avro schema might change with time and we will add new field or update existing field etc etc now with evolving schemas our downstream consumer should able to consume messages seamlessly without sending a production alert at 3 am okay that means if we are evolving this schema then our downstream job should not fail okay then how the schema evolution we can do that schema registry beautifully handle and how is that let us try to explain okay so when we are registering a schema for the first time or when a schema is first created it get an unique schema id and a version number 
like if you recall our previous video i have told you that here in schema registry if i go here we register a schema if i enter inside that if i go to all version here you can see that this particular schema got a schema id and a unique version right that's what i have written here now with time our schema will evolve and we might add new changes and if the changes are compatible then we get a new schema id and our version number increments okay what is the meaning of schema compatibility that i am going to discuss just hold on this particular concept for some time i will explain that so just as of now you understand like this way if the schema changes whatever we are doing that is compatible then what will happen in this particular schema registry here schema id will increase so current id is 10 maybe the next id will be 11 and so on the version number will increase and the new schema will be registered here okay under the same name because the same schema we are evolving it is not like new schema is getting created okay so basically you can have multiple schema versions so if i go to schema registry you will see that here it is stored as a subject okay so one unique schema is stored as a subject within subject you can have multiple version okay so suppose you are creating another schema here that if you, if you are considering that as a new schema then that will be another subject but if the same schema get evolved so within that same subject only the schema evaluation will happen okay subject will not change right so that is another point now there are various pattern for schema evaluation okay one is called forward compatibility i have told you right here that if the changes are compatible then only the new schema will be coming within the subject of our schema registry it will get a schema id and our version number will increase right so let's try to explore the compatibility part so first compatibility is forward compatibility so what is that basically it says that update producer to the new version of the schema that is v2 version of the schema and gradually update the consumer to v2 version okay so first we will update the producer with the new schema and then eventually we will move to consumer to update to the new schema okay so obviously at a particular time you can understand this kind of situation will arrive where producer is having new schema but consumer is following the old schema and then also our whole pipeline should not break if that kind of situation we are getting that due to some schema update first we are updating producer and then we are updating consumer but still our pipeline is not breaking then we call that as forward compatibility why forward because from producer messages are getting produced and then eventually it goes to consumer right so here the movement is basically in the forward direction first producer then we are going to consumer okay so producer to consumer forward direction so that's why it is called forward compatibility okay now let us try to understand one simple example where the schema change is forward compatible okay that is first we will update producer and if the producer is running with new schema version and consumer is running with old schema version then also our pipeline will not break such example is like this okay so suppose our v1 version of schema looks like this here we are having two fields basically one is name age and another name is name okay basically in our data we mean to say that there should be one key called age another key called name age should be integer type and name should be string type now this particular v1 schema suppose our producer and consumer both are using okay and now suppose we are doing some changes and the changes are like this what we are doing here here we added one new field in our data okay or json payload whatever we are sending from producer and that is basically subject another key we added that is subject which should be string type okay now you can understand intuitively that if we change our schema our new schema if looks like this and if we implement this particular schema first in the producer and then we move to consumer then also there is no problem why the reason is very simple suppose our data is started producing the subject key and the value is coming in producer so producer will take that and in kafka cluster it will be coming consumer if it is following the older version of the schema it will not consume the subject part okay but the existing pipeline will not break might be later some at some point of time we need to update the consumer code to consume the subject key also for processing purpose that is fine but the existing pipeline will not break due to this kind of schema update right 
so one thing you can easily understand that if you are adding some new field and if the particular new schema is first implemented in producer side then also our consumer will not break max to max what will happen that consumer will not consume that new field but the existing consumer pipeline will not break so we can call this kind of schema change as forward compatible okay so this is very simple and intuitive i hope you can easily understand then backward compatibility what do you mean by backward compatibility that is first the v2 version has to be implemented in consumer side and then we should go to producer side okay so that's what the picture is showing consumer reading with v2 that is new schema version and then we need to change to producer that is producer writing with v2 version should happen after the consumer side changes we are implementing okay that is at a particular time this kind of scenario will appear where the consumer is running with v2 version on new schema and producer is running with old schema but still the pipeline is not breaking okay that time if this kind of schema change we are doing then we will call that as backward compatible okay just a simple example if you want to see that looks like this okay suppose this is our v1 version of schema which our both producer and consumer is following okay what it is saying that here age is one key and name is another key age should be integer name should be string type okay and suppose the business requirement changes and the business team don't want to get this particular name field okay so they asked us to remove that so in the new schema we remove that particular name field okay now this particular schema has to be implemented in the consumer side first why because suppose in the older version when this particular schema was there for both producer and consumer might be the consumer is consuming the name key also okay corresponding to name key whatever value is coming suppose our consumer was consuming okay and now suppose suddenly we are implementing this particular schema in the producer side and consumer is still following the older schema that is basically this particular schema then consumer is expecting that obviously name key will come but actually in producer side we stopped producing the key name okay so obviously our consumer will start failing right so this kind of schema if we are changing that is suppose we are removing a field then first in the consumer side we need to make an update okay we need to make the code change that a consumer should not expect the name field compulsorily and then we should change the producer okay so this kind of schema change is backward compatible not forward compatible this kind of schema change you cannot implement first in producer and then update in consumer first here you have to update the consumer and then only you can update the producer okay now to understand the compatibility check easily here you can use the conductor tool okay like let me show you so here you can see whatever schema we registered that is basically by default backward compatible backward compatible means what first in consumer side update should happen and then in producer side update should happen okay suppose you are doing some schema change and you want to check the compatibility all you can do here there is an option called check compatibility okay so i will copy this particular one and i will paste so this is an existing schema and here we are putting our updated version or v2 version and we want to check whether it is compatible or not or what kind of compatible this schema will be if we are changing for example we are removing this particular field okay so if we are removing name field here you can see it is clearly showing that it is backward compatible not forward that means first in consumer side you have to update then you can update the producer side okay and why it is i have already explained okay suppose i am adding a new field like for example it is subject okay so here we are adding a new field so consumer is expecting only age and name okay if we are adding a new field then we can make the changes first in producer not a problem and then we have to change in consumer side okay so that producer will start producing the subject and then eventually we will tell consumer that okay from now onwards you should expect the key subject also so here you can see uh, might be i am putting some wrong configuration let me just check here i need to put a comma okay when we are putting a new field here you can see it is forward compatible but it is not backward compatible forward compatible means first we have to make the changes in producer side then we can make the changes in consumer side okay as simple as that so you can easily understand using this kind of approach here we can do easily compatibility check using conductor right so whenever you are changing this schema which is existing schema then be very careful with this compatibility check otherwise it will fail 
okay now let me show you the uh, schema evaluation here like for example here what i will do i will update this schema so this is an existing schema right and here i will update this schema like this way maybe for example here i am putting a comma and then here i am putting a new field suppose just to show you a demo So here if we are adding a new field and if we click on update here we are getting an error. Why we are getting an error? Because this schema changes is in incompatible because our this particular schema registry is backward compatible version. Okay. So we need to make sure that we are doing backward compatible operation like for example here I can remove this particular field and then this schema will be backward compatible. Okay. So here what I can do I can make an update. So when I am making an update, here you see that schema ID got changed and version number increased. That's what I have written here. If you see that with time, our schema will evolve, we will add new changes and if the change is compatible, then only it will register within the same subject, a new schema ID will be generated and version number will increase. That's what you can see here. Okay. And now what will happen when we will use our producer, our producer will follow the latest version. Okay, that is basically version 2. So here this time onwards if we are producing messages here if we don't send the key name then also it will work perfectly fine. But earlier when we were using first schema version that time we observed that when we are not passing the key name then it was not allowing to publish messages. But this time it will do. Why? Because we have updated this schema and now the name key it is not expecting. Okay. So here schema ID also you need to update in the consumer side for deserialization purpose the new schema ID it should use which is basically 12 okay. So here I will keep that as 12 and now here this particular message which earlier was throwing error let us try to publish now and here not set the name field is not set okay. So what happened let me just check here I will use avro schema registry and record name I will use this particular one only and here produce maybe i will close this and try again maybe it is taking some time for refresh purpose so here producer is there and here what i will do i will use avro and here record i will choose mine one and then here what i will do i will paste only h okay right and now here what i will do I will basically produce the message. See, it is published successfully. Okay, so basically, our producer is now following the new schema version, not the older one. So, even I can show you the consumer side also, it is working. So, I'll go to consumer. Here, I will choose my uh, topic. Okay, the schema ID for the new schema version is 12, and then here, uh, maybe I can choose the latest one only I want to consume. So, okay, here, what I will do, I will start. Okay. So it is waiting from producer side I can produce messages okay so when we are producing here you will see that the age key is coming age is 78 okay and even I can go inside this particular message and show you if I go to details section here you will see that if I go to value schema it is basically following the newly updated schema not the older one having schema ID too okay so that's how here you can easily understand that here the schema evaluation is also successfully working okay and i hope you understood forward and backward compatibility right and basically in case of pipeline with schema registry in backend when you will work with python and java api what will happen that in source from source system the data is continuously coming suppose you are using a new schema in your producer side the producer will understand okay this schema is used newly because in local cache it will not match with respect to schema id and schema mapping okay so what Avro serializer will do it will go to schema registry and it will check whether it is a new schema or any existing schema got evolved okay based on the name like here if you see in the schema registry here we are having some record name right like for example uh, if you consider this one my record to rename one like that record is having individual name so based on the record name it will understand whether it is existing schema or new schema if it is existing schema that means this schema got evolved so it will do a compatibility check okay 
whether it is compatible or not if it is compatible then only it will basically add the new schema id and version number will increase and the schema id the schema registry will return to avro serializer now avro serializer will use that particular schema id and will serialize the data and send that to kafka now when consumer will receive that it will get the new schema id corresponding to the latest evolved schema and then it will obviously be a mish in local case because it is not used earlier that modified schema so it will go to schema registry it will get the latest version or evolved schema and it will use that for deserialization purpose in the consumer side okay and then it will be processed in the target so that's how in case of pipeline with schema registry the schema evaluation works okay whether this schema is compatible or not whether this schema got changed or whether it is a new schema everything will be handled by the avro serializer and deserializer itself in the back end okay so i hope you understood this overall funda of schema evaluation this is all for my this video in my upcoming video i will show you how to integrate schema registry with python till then stay tuned and if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you